It's impossible to fight at federal employees. I don't know. Severe, so shout out to him. The information for him should be below. This video is breaking news about Hillary Clinton and what she had to say today, Sunday, in Georgia. At a speech where she was receiving an award. What's up, Patriots? American Joe here. I have a little news report from around the world. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> really have my stuff Donald Trump is now president of the United States. Hello, hello. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I really appreciate it. So, this is one of the things I've been doing for So it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance. Without debate, without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed, and no republic can survive. All right, Patriots, welcome to the Patriot Hour panel, the weekly panel show where we are rotating uh, between several, several great guys, all right, um, good good people in for the cause, some veterans, some just Patriots, and uh, we're going to get into that panel really quickly here. We're going to have American Joe, we got Doug Dakota, Drone Tech Politics, Robert Knorr, and uh, SJG Perspective, all right, um, Make sure you guys uh, subscribe to these. I'll have all the links down below after the video. I'm going to get uh, each one of their channels down there so you can get there easily. And again, without further ado, let's uh, let's jump into this panel. I'm uh, excited here to see how the software works. How are you guys doing tonight? What's up, brother? Very good. What's going on, guys? Thanks. What's going on, man? All right, we're going to do a quick round here. We got, we're got we just getting into it, but we got about 300 into the room. Welcome, all Patriots, again, for being here. I know it's a, a later than I normally do, but uh, this is going to be the norm, so get used to it. Um, all right, so we got American Joe. We're going to start with him. I'm going to give each of these members here tonight uh, about two minutes. I want to really quickly tell us a little bit about yourself, why, why you – or here, not necessarily here with me tonight, but why you know why you're doing what you do, and uh, your maybe thoughts on just the impeachment a little bit. Uh, if you can do that in about two minutes, and we're going to start with Joe. What's up, brother? Well, thanks for having me on the show, and um, I want to thank everybody for coming out and hanging out with us tonight. Um, I started my channel, the American Joe Show, back in November 11th of 2018 because. I was tired of watching my country go down the crap tubes. I was tired of sitting back. It's been something that's kind of been fomenting up within me for years, watching the political system unfold, watching particularly the Democrat Party and their policies and what, they, what they've done over so many decades in our country to basically destroy it. They want to they want to transform it fundamentally from what it was when i was a young child growing up in this country it was an amazing place and it's still the greatest country on earth by far but i'll be damned if i'm going to stand by any longer and just silently watch as half the country actively seeks to destroy the very foundation of everything we stand for all the way down to the family unit they're trying to redefine what a family is they're trying to redefine what a person is all the way to the top and how the government is run and the corruption that runs so deep when president trump uh went down that escalator in 2016 i was one of the few people that believed he was gonna win the election early on i, I thought he was gonna destroy hillary clinton and it was uh very beautiful on election night what happened since then, we've had nothing but the Democrats who cannot believe they lost to Donald Trump going after one conspiracy after another, Russia collusion, Russia collusion, Russia collusion, 
on and on and on. He's been a Russian agent, a Russian spy. And now we find ourselves at the Ukraine, which is absolutely ludicrous. The entire scenario is absolutely outrageous. And even though the Republicans have done a fine job of destroying the prosecutorial case of the Republican or of the Democrats in this ridiculous in uh, Senate trial, um, the Democrats still controlled the media and they're still able to create narratives and spin narratives. So they're going to use this Michael Bolton case with this whole book and this whole thing to keep spinning and spinning and spinning to try to get to the resolution they're looking for, which is to get Donald Trump out of office. So yeah. uh, no. there's wow. so much to talk about there. I could go on for a long time. <laughs> I'll let somebody else go, brother. No, you don't steal my thunder. <laughs> Doug, um, I know, and, and Joe, thank you uh, again, folks. This is he's a, a veteran, so thank you for your service, and uh, we appreciate uh, appreciate you being here, bud. Um, thank you so much, and we're getting back to you thanks, here in brother. a minute. Doug, what's up, brother? Hey, what's up, brother? Uh, thanks for having me on, and uh, I'm happy to be a part of this panel. And hopefully, between all of us, we can uh, find a way to solve all of the world's problems. Yes. Uh, I started my channel, let's see, eight years ago, uh, July 4th of uh, 2011, pretty much as a just a rant, uh, a way to uh, relieve a little bit of PTSD. I uh, served uh, four combat tours and was pretty wound up, wasn't in the right place. Uh, mine wasn't in the right place for uh, help and it became an avenue for me to just express how pissed off I was at what was happening in this country. Then I reeled it in and a lot of people came to me and said, you know what, if you could just take that passion on how pissed off you are, what's happening with the government and what's happening to the VA, uh, you could really start affecting other people and reaching other people and, and doing good. Uh, so I did and eventually uh, got the right people around me, got the right doctors, got the right medication, uh, got things under control, and uh, started looking positive. Uh, so my YouTube channel is under Douglas M. Dakota Sr., and uh, I do uh, the Douglas Dakota Show on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 Central. I try and put out a video uh, at least every other day. And uh, you can also find me on DouglasDakota.com. Twitter has banned me for life, so I wear that uh, with pride and honor. means I'm obviously getting the message out there to affect the liberals. And uh, Facebook, uh, American Patriot by the Grace of God, and uh, my nonprofit that I founded uh, back in 2010, which has uh, been doing wonderful work helping veterans, is called Veterans United for Justice, and we have a Facebook page for that. So basically, I just try and get factual information out there that you can't get off of CNN and MSNBC. And uh, even as we move closer and closer towards the end of this year, and it just started, I'm seeing that Fox News is starting to follow suit with them as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't like that. So I will keep uh, pushing to get the facts and the truth out there to the people, and hopefully we can all make this place better for mankind thank you for your service by the way brother uh thank you that's bro. that's so what it's about drone tech what is up brother um tell us a little bit about yourself yeah uh first just i want to say thanks for having me here and uh thanks for your service doug got a nice beard going there thanks all of you <laughs> for your service um i was in the air force i was a little chair force uh uh you know, repaired uh, bomb lists and stuff, so I didn't really do anything. But uh, <clears throat> uh, as far as my channel goes, uh, it's it's anti media. You know, I've I started paying attention to the the media and how biased they were during the Bush administration. I I've been paying to paying attention to politics long before that, but uh, start started really noticing, especially when when you went over to the Obama administration, it was pretty obvious that the media was completely biased. And so I started a YouTube channel. I've had it since about 2009, but uh, didn't really start doing a lot with it until around 2015, 2016. 
and uh, when Trump was running. And uh, ever since then, it, it kind of blew up. And uh, basically, my message is that the media is completely corrupt. I mean, they're completely corrupt. And uh, their actions are more like an enemy of the people than an actual fourth estate. You know, their job is actually to be a check on government, uh, but all governments, not just the Republican side. And, you know, I'm no, uh, I'm no lapdog Republican by any means or lapdog right wing or anything like that. But uh, I, I do think that the media is, especially now, they've really let any sort of subterfuge go. And they are the propaganda arm of one party. That's a real problem for the unity of this country. I mean, you see it happening right now. We're, we're, we're really breaking apart right now. It's not good. And uh, that's, what, well, that's why I have my channel. You know, I, I just want to show people, show them, you know, clips from the media or just things that the media are doing that, I, you know, I'll hijack the term, you know, teachable moments, even though it's cringy. Uh, but, but they are. They, they do things sometimes that are just that, that make their – their bias obvious and their agenda obvious. And so uh, since they're ignoring their duty to be a, a, the fourth estate and be a check on government, I'm going to do everything that I can to destroy them or at least open enough eyes to, to the point that nobody believes them. And I feel like that's happening and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, oh, yeah. No, I think you do a great job on uh, some of the videos yeah. I've caught. So keep it up. Thank you for your service as well, uh, brother. So, wow, we got as far as of now four, like the first four of us are veterans. Um, I didn't, uh -oh. I knew, I knew you two were, but uh -oh. <laughs> all right, Robert, no, all right, Robert, brother, no by the way, Robert, you're going to no catch Robert on uh, the channel here coming up. We were just talking beforehand behind yeah. the scenes that he'll be coming on, um, you know, in a few days. But anyway, brother, go ahead. What's, uh, what's your story? Yeah. So I've lived in rural Pennsylvania my whole life and I was someone who, Everyone that I respect in life are the people that where I grew up with that went and served in the military. And I do, from the bottom of my heart, thank you all for your service. And even you that are just watching at home, thank you for your service. Um, but I, I'm terrible at all the things that everyone I've lived with do, like working on cars, being a carpenter, you know, hunting. Uh, the first deer I ever shot at was four times. I missed it four times. I'm just pathetic at that stuff. I went off to university and became one of the best debaters in the country. And the debate circuit is as left as left wing gets. And they almost exclusively come from urban areas, wealthier areas. And I felt that after I left there, that what could I do to help the people that I love most in life? The Americans that really make our country work, the farmers, the truck drives, the veterans who don't have a voice. Where is their voice when you turn on the television? You don't get it in the entertainment industry. You don't get it in Silicon Valley where we're being censored off Twitter, like Doug said, and other places. Um, so I wanted to be that type of voice. My channel was trying to bring about those people and get them to call into my show that maybe think, well, I don't have anything to say about politics. I find that the less someone talks about politics, the more they actually have relevant stuff to say most of the time. And so that's what I was, I ran for Congress as a Republican in a special election here in 2019. And I went and got to speak at the convention. I took ninth out of 24. Um, and what I told them at the convention was, I just want to let you know that us normal people that don't have a voice, we're starting to have a voice through people like everyone listening and everyone who's on this panel today. And we're not going to put up with, I don't care if you have an R or a D next to your name, we're tired of people going to Washington and not representing us. We're tired of not having a voice in the narrative. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Look, real quick on impeachment. Um, I think the take that I've had that's slightly different, I hope it doesn't upset people, is I think the Republicans made a huge mistake from the get-go. The best defense of Donald Trump is Joe Biden is corrupt. He should have demanded an investigation before we gave money. And we should have investigated Ukrainian election interference in 2016, which is obvious. So I don't even care if there was a quid pro quo. Our president is tasked with enforcing the law and using one billion of our tax dollars to make sure a prosecutor didn't look into Joe Biden's son, as far as I'm concerned, is unconscionable. And the fact that we have a media that is just a propaganda mouthpiece for the Democratic Party and the intel agencies means that they were able to get away with this. Make no mistake about it. The impeachment case against Trump is just the Democrats criminalizing investigating their corruption. Amen. <laughs> I love it. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, SJG perspective here, folks. Um, great yeah. channel, by the way. I was checking it out a little bit uh, 
a couple weeks ago and when i when i met you and i was doing it again i got videos from each of you for the intro by the way so i downloaded yeah. it oh, yeah, I love from the one you picked for me by the way that was great <laughs> <laughs> yeah so my um my life started in a cold wet chilly day 1974 maybe that's going too far back um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so no, I started my channel in October of 2018. So I, I don't know how the math works out on this one, but I started my, my channel a month before Joe did, and he is absolutely flat kicking my ass for subs. <laughs> you know, no, I, I love, I love, uh, love Uncle Joe, Make American Joe. He's been such a, such a supporter of my channel, and I appreciate that. But, um, don't need a shout out to him using the panel, anyways. Um, yeah, so I, I uh, kicked it off just because a lot of the same stuff that Joe said, the cultural, you know, culture is um, up, upstream of politics or politics is downstream of culture, however you want to look at it. And, um, you know, the social justice, the Antifa things that were going on, the postmodern crime uh, crap, the intersectionality stuff, all of that was going to make my head explode. So I got a channel and I'm like, I, I, I love to talk. I, I, I like to make people laugh. I have kind of an irreverent sense, sense, sense of humor. And so I got a channel and I'm like, screw it, I'm going to do this. And uh, I've been making parodies. That's kind of what got me going at first, making parody songs, but then also just, you know, doing news commentary and reading articles and, uh, and you know, just just kind of blowing up this, this crazy, their up is down and down is up and there is no right and there is no wrong. This postmodern mentality that is infiltrated and has given, given us that term cultural Marxism and all this other stuff. It is polluting, and I got a 13-year-old daughter, so I am I'm incensed by what they're being taught in school right now. I'm incensed by what the, what the the programming that's going on in their minds, and that's kind of why I started my channel just to push back on all of that kind of stuff. Um, uh, you know, when it comes to the impeachment, the, the left is eating itself right now, and it and it's fun to watch. From um, I think we all know, and, and we don't need to. I'm not going to rehash all this right now. It's an absolute dog and pony show right now is what this is this is this is a wagging the dog completely i'm i'm with uh i'm with robert a lot on the thing that i don't care if there was a the, the, the fact of the matter that people can't see the very crux of the matter when it comes to the impeachment is that joe biden was did actually did a quid pro quo on nash and, and laughed about it nobody's paying attention to that and we're just trying to make up stuff against trump it's ultimately because they know they have no prayer um in this 2020 election and the next parody I'm going to do is going to be a song by Fleetwood Max, and it's going to be, and a landslide will bring you down. I'm going to do a landslide one. For oh, man. I can't wait for the highlights. Right. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> um, well, even with all the impeachment, Trump's approval ratings climbs, I guess, to the highest levels of uh, his presidency this week. That's kind of... <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, yeah of cool. course. I mean... Look, this entire thing, if we're going to start talking about impeachment, I'm going to just jump. Can I jump in? Or oh, am yeah, I? Go yeah. You're good. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be able to out talk Robert uh, here. Obviously, he's going to be the best guy on this. But the, the thing that's driving me crazy on this entire P impeachment thing is that if you ask anybody what law has been broken here, they always, they always point to the GAO. But the GAO found that the Obama administration broke the law seven times. And yet, that was never a scandal. Nobody ever called for impeachment. The media, I don't even remember that being a story. Did, does anybody hear? I don't. So if that's the case, then that's just proof, more proof how flimsy this entire thing is. It's just political, pl completely partisan. And the, the funny thing about mm -hmm. it is, and I'll just end on this real quick, is if you look back at the Clinton impeachment, it was exactly the opposite. The media and Democrats were taking our position right now. And... Uh, it's funny if you look; yeah. they'll typically be pointing out the hypocritical positions of Republicans and uh, right-wing pundits. But the truth is, if they pointed out their own, you know, they're just as hypocritical. Yeah, it's funny because they did the same thing about immigration. If you think about it, you know, the same thing they're doing about impeachment right now. They did the same thing about immigration back then. They were like, "We need a, we need to slow down immigration. We need to stop the people coming across the border. All of this stuff. They, it's complete. They flip flop, and everything they ever say and do is complete and total projection of what they actually think and what they actually believe in." Absolutely, hundred percent. What I find yeah. compelling is, uh, you know, there's video of Nadler when this first broke and he's like you know it is a very sad day in our country because we are impeaching the president of the united he said it almost like he was trying to go for an oscar and literally <laughs> days later uh pelosi's out there with a pen signing ceremony where they're just giddy as school children you know in a candy shop and and maxine walters is raising that 
impeachment pen high and she's just smiling from ear to ear and they've been yapping about impeachment for three years straight and the american people are supposed to believe this has anything to do with the ukraine come on people that's why there's right. no charges in there related to the ukraine that's why it's just all blanket garbage i mean they really yeah. think we're just the, the the stupidest people in the world the democrats do and the media right behind them this propaganda arm the state controlled media just keeps pushing and pushing these narratives out every day the same thing over and over ever since that Bolton transcript came yeah. out i mean that's all they've been talking about that's all they've been talking yeah. about mm. hey doug they are enemy you... number one let me tell you they are yeah doug do yeah. you think this taints uh trump's legacy i mean what do you what do you think on on and that sometimes doesn't mean much to people but i know to the Democrats, that's one of the huge, it is, it is, it's forever tarnished. <laughs> well, here's the deal. There, it didn't tarnish Bill Clinton, except for, you know, those of us on the right. Uh, the country's so divided, you know, you either love Trump or in that same category is uh, you deal with Trump or <laughs> You completely hate this guy so much so that uh, it affects your health and you need cry rooms and, you know, things like that. So, you know, in the, I think in history, it will show that uh, the same type of situation of what happened with Clinton as far as how the impeachment went, uh, because let's face it, you know, the House did do that, uh, but the Senate will not. He's not going to leave office this way, um, and I, you know, I think in the, in the when it's all said and done, history will write it off as that he will have been one of the best presidents to ever swear in and yep. take the oath for this country. Yeah. Now, and that's like none uh, of us are legal scholars here, right? Yeah. Like we're not. I, I'm not. No. The vast <laughs> majority of this country just wants some form of consistency. That's it. They're tired of the hypocrisy. I've said from day one, if Trump or anyone on his team broke some law that could be proven, hold them accountable. I, I'm The movement of Trump is more than just the person. But what aggravates you is every single, and I have an outstanding challenge to anyone, every single crime, aside from the annulments, because no Democrats ever owned anything before office, but aside from that, you list me one crime that Trump or anyone connected to him has been accused of, and I guarantee I can show you a more blatant example by the intel agencies and the Democrats. Yeah. This whole thing yeah, is exactly. still about Russia. If you watch any of the impeachment stuff, what's Adam Schiff yeah. spending his closing arguments talking about? Oh, Trump didn't send aid to the Ukraine, and if we don't fight Russia in the Ukraine, we'll have to fight them over here. More warmongering garbage from these people. They'll never send their children to fight, so they have no problem having these foreign regime change wars that make them rich. Meanwhile, how did the whole Russia thing start? Literally, think about this. They said that Trump tried to get dirt on Hillary from Russians. So how did they prove that? By paying a British spy to get dirt on Trump from Russians. Like, you can't make this stuff up. That's, they said yeah. that quid pro quos are bad, so Trump needs to be impeached for investigating Obama and Biden's quid pro quo, which was okay. I mean, it's... That's what the ever don't be confused. Don't think you have to be some kind of genius getting into, you know, stacks of paper like this. It's real simple. Either quid pro quo or they're not. They said it was legit under Biden and Obama. All Trump was trying to do was investigate corruption. If Biden didn't do anything wrong, he should come out and say, yeah, by all means, investigate me. I didn't do anything wrong. But the fact that he and the media are fighting so hard lets you know the truth that we all know. Mm -hmm. They are corrupt. They've been corrupt for decades. And they're upset that Trump might be the person who finally upsets the apple cart. Yeah. So no equal you know, justice. No That's the yeah. equal justice thing you brought up. And real quickly, I, I would like to add that. Uh, so... You said it there. They're, they're screaming about things right now that all I can hear or what I r runs through my mind as I hear everything day by day is this all happened already. It sounds really familiar to things that happened in 20. You can't start this. Well, who started an investigation on Trump when he was a citizen running? Well, yep. the FBI came. Well, who gave the FBI paperwork? It all goes back to people and, and, and political angles, and it's everything they're screaming now. But yet there's been no equal justice for the last group to do it but they want it to not happen right now or something. It, it's, 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 the, the hypocrisy blows my mind. I'm not well, one to tip for tat, by the way. But We have yeah. this on both sides but of I, the aisle. 
we shouldn't be um, we shouldn't try to give ourselves the illusion that this is a Democrat problem. This is a politician problem. That's right. And as That's long right. as we yeah. are, as long as we have people in office for thirty or forty years, they're these guys are going to do all mm -hmm. the dirty background or backroom deals they got to do, and and they're just playing a game, man. They're playing a game because. How can you be in Congress making one hundred seventy-four thousand a year, and in two years you're a multimillionaire? The math yeah. doesn't make any sense; mm -hmm. it doesn't add up. So the corruption runs deep, and you know this whole short-term memory thing is present on both sides of the aisle. You got people on the right, people that are part of the Patriot movement that blame Trump for red flag laws. Well, red flag laws have been on the books right. for since nineteen ninety-nine, long before Donald Trump was ever considering running for president. So. He's not at fault for red flag laws as much as you guys may not like to hear that. He's not the reason why we have red flag laws on the books in 17, 18, however many states it is right now. I can't keep track. But this is on both sides, and there's a lot of misinformation always flowing around, and that's the problem we live in. I have not been touching on the, corona, the coronavirus at all on my channel, hardly at all, because there's just too much misinformation being passed around. I can't yeah. tell you what's true from fiction no matter how yeah, many websites I review. And that's politics, that's news stories, that's security issues over in the Middle East, you know, how many bombs dropped, how many people died, what's really happening over there, who did what to who. That's the world we live in right now. And that's the challenge yeah, for me yeah. as a YouTuber, trying to bring um, good, solid information to an audience yeah. in a very rapid pace, and yet I can't vet the information in any good amount of time. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to yeah, say I, something about that coronavirus real quick. Uh, look, folks, Corona personally sucks. And there's a lot of other beers out there that you can actually drink and, and forget about Corona, okay? Go to Budweiser, go to Coors, do something else, all right? Uh, you don't need this virus. And uh, so just lay off the Corona and the Lyme altogether. And you'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. The, now, if they could come up with a tequila virus, that would probably be a little, <laughs> that would be a little more interesting. Then we could get I, into I think that. they hear familiar with Resident Evil. The game. Yeah. Or the I, game. I, I know. Yeah. It. So yeah. if you look at the label of the company, the corporation that supposedly is making these viruses there in China, it's the la their logo looks exactly like the label from yeah. Resident Evil. Oh, wow. And Corona <laughs> is an anagram for raccoon. I did enough so. research to find <laughs> the, the guy that pushed, and I think I, we texted. Where are we going story. right now? What what channel is this Ron now? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get to how the moon landing was fake in a minute too. <laughs> yeah. So did you guys hear that? Maybe if um, if if like so we know like uh, they're they're going after Trump impeachment. One of the one of the articles is uh, obstruction of Congress, not so much obstruction of power, but obstruction of Congress which they I'll say they asked call. for paperwork. He said, I'll go to the courts and see what they tell me I got to give you. And they're like, nope, nope, that'll take too long. Uh, obstruction of Congress. Um, so they're like not they're allowing not this. Yeah, right. I mean, Can that's... I that? that? Can I, so look at this. Uh, the Obama administration, during the Fast and Furious investigation, Congress Eric requested Holder. a subpoena documents. And that was allowed to transpire. And eventually, at the end of the administration, they came out, Right. If they would allow that now, maybe it would it would happen. But it's another great example that this entire thing is a partisan hit job. Yep. Yeah. Under uh, well, I mean, Hillary Clinton emails that were subpoenaed. Exactly. I mean, Hillary Clinton that's emails exactly. that Obama threw that's out. That's exactly it. Yeah. Make it Hillary as Clinton as destroyed devices and then yeah. joked about wiping a server, and yet that's she right. got off from the FBI with no intent. What the hell? And they, this is allowed to happen because they complicate the situation, right? Oh, like the average person, my parents, they don't know anything about congressional subpoenas, right? So here's how I explain it to them. This is what the Democrats are saying. Trump wasn't allowed to fight subpoenas in court. That's reason to remove him for office. Now, if he would have just deleted all of the evidence, then he would have been okay. <laughs> and exactly. my parents were like, wait, what? I'm like, yes, that's literally the Democrats it. argument. And, and once you that simple, people were like, they think you're lying. They're like, surely you're making that up. Oh, I'm not making it up. That's literally what happened. Hillary deleted 30,000 emails. Perfectly fine. Trump said, well, wait, before I release them, can we make sure that the courts are okay with it? That's a crime. I mean, you can't make it up. Completely. I mean, it's one of the things that baffles me. 
to this day. I don't I don't get it. It's what drives me to make videos. I don't understand why everybody isn't on board at this point. It's so obvious. I thought I heard if if they brought up charges and I know they're going through the process now, but after I mean they said they could have went to the Supreme Courts or the judges and and had them look at this and then if it wasn't valuable they can throw it out it never would have been an impeachment stain it can literally been reversed i don't know by accepting it into the senate now and going this far but they're it's kind of like i don't know how to explain that because it's never really right. been done that i know of but you know maybe somebody else can take that on but i i they, these experts well, the history of, of the history on this is the history on this is now written right so this in 20 years yeah. it's going to be written right. that donald trump was impeached by the house of representatives that's that's yep. been written and and Trump hates that, and that's what they love. See, they love that Trump yeah. hates that. Trump puts yeah. his name on everything. Yeah. He's got his names on the side of buildings. It's what if anybody cares about his legacy as president, it's him. Okay, oh, yeah. he, he yeah. cares greatly yeah. about that. So yeah. in that, Pelosi really got a good one in on Trump right there at the last yeah. minute. So he yeah, yeah. But that's okay because he can get her back by just trashing them in 2020. We get the House of Representatives back. And we reverse all this nonsense they've been doing for the past couple of years yeah. and uh, get this country back on the right track. So in the end, we'll have the last laugh on this. I, I believe we're going to get back on track. But Trump's, uh, you know, presidential history is tarnished. That's there's no yeah. way around that. It's going to be written. And that you, way. you know, going into this, you know, going into this 2020 election, it's going to get acquitted. But all they're going to do is harp on how could you be electing an impeached president? He was impeached, people. All the left wing, all the Don Lamonts and the the, the <laughs> Brian Stetlers and the you know Chris Coma and all that. All, all they're going to be saying is he was impeached, and 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 you're supporting him. How deplorable are you, people? That's going to be what's hammered home. You're absolutely right. But ultimately, we're going to get the last laugh. I, I have no doubt about. Well, the whole I don't think we will because what I think will happen. Rook. Hold on. Let Doug, go ahead, Doug. Hi, Doug. I was going to say the whole reason for not waiting on the courts was because that will not get settled because of appeals and everything before the 2020 election. And they know they can't win. They don't have a candidate to go up against him out of any of those that stands a chance. Okay. So there's no other way come 2020 than to get trying, you know, get him impeached. If, if he's removed from office, that's the only way they they have a snowball's chance in hell of winning. So, you know, if they would wait for the courts, then there's no way to do the impeachment, and then there's, you know, he's going to win anyhow. So, you know, I think that's just their last ditch effort, which is jumping and trying to push it through. And can Two I say something to that real quick? quick? Uh, when when you like, yeah. I'm just real quick, SCG, uh Remember this when you go to vote in a non-presidential year, right? You think it doesn't matter? From here on out through history, every Republican president will be impeached if they do not control the House. Guaranteed. This is going to be the playbook from here on out. So when you say, oh, it's not a presidential year, we don't have to have good turnout. This is what's going to happen. Kind of new Just standards. So you know. The other thing is, you yeah. should ask yourself, what is my Republican representative doing to fight this coup? Because I'm sorry, just voting against impeachment and then going back to your cushy office, that's not doing it for me. It's time for the Republicans to do more. Um, yeah. Go ahead, SJG. Real quick on that, I, I did a video I, I, yesterday I about. Say something too, if I could, uh, at the end, um, I did a video yesterday on the three people in charge of the whole <clears throat> impeachment. They voted no on the dang bill to go to the Ukraine in the first place. Like they didn't yep. want to give them anything anyway. So exactly, yeah. weird, weird. But go ahead, SJG. I, I don't remember exactly what I was going to say, but it was probably oh, it was probably pretty <laughs> smart, like what Robert said. Because I mean, it's probably you know Robert probably said what I was going to say. But one thing I will say. <laughs> Nice try. Was. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say exactly what he said. <laughs> I just, yeah, he's Robert the smartest said, guy I mean, here. Yeah, yeah, I could probably say it right. a little more eloquently, but, you know, I'll just give it to Robert, whatever. Um, <laughs> oh, man, it just totally escaped me, too. Um, ah, drone tech. Drone tech, you're up. <laughs> Forgot it. I lost it. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> Sorry, I ruined everything. Yeah, I mean, I was just basically going to say that the media has basically set up a situation here, a scenario, and it actually started back during the Bush administration, where any time a Republican wins, it's not legitimate. It's only legitimate if a Democrat wins. And I'm telling, I've been saying it for years, to try to, it's obvious at this point, like Schiff basically said that. I mean, let, let's look at Bush. Bush got elected. 
illegitimate. They said it was hanging chads. He got elected in, uh, the, a second time. They said the same thing that they started saying Bush regime. So then Obama gets elected. Perfect. And then Trump gets elected, which they all predicted wouldn't happen. So they need some grand conspiracy. So you get this whole Russian thing. And so from here on out, they've set up a situation where if you vote for a Republican, you're voting for Russians. And if Democrats don't win, it's not legitimate. So that's what we're looking at. It's bad. How about I don't see how quick. it can end All any right. other way um, than well, armed conflict I, at some point. I hate to say that. I know it sounds batshit crazy, <laughs> but that that's one of the things that's driven me this all this time because I think that's what we're where we're headed. And I'd like to stop it, but yeah. I don't think there's any stop. Well, see, you know, they've already they're already setting that up though. They're already I mean, with this whole electoral like Joe just put one out on the electoral college, right? How Warren is saying that, and they've been saying it for a long time, but it's back in the news cycle again, that they're going to, you know, uh, abolish the uh, electoral college. And that's going to be their, their talking point come 2020. Well, he still didn't win the popular vote. He's illegitimate. He's illegitimate. This, this electoral college that was put in place by the patriarchy and the white, the, the old white men that, you know, to keep the people down, we need to abolish the electoral college. And, 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 and Trump is not, you know, he's not the, 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 the right president, you know, the, the just president. It should be the, the popular vote. They're already setting that up. They're, it's, it's already being set up. Also, they're saying if we don't impeach him, the elections will be rigged. Now, when Trump was yeah. saying they were rigged back in 16 and 15, he was nuts. The media hounded him. Obama would come mm -hmm. on and say, we don't, our elections are sacred. We, we don't have that going yeah. on. He was a nutcase. But now they're all using it if he don't get impeached. So, if he gets impeached, we'll be all right. Here. <laughs> well, here, here's, the, here's the really good news, guys. The Democrat Party is in a, in a lot of trouble right now from within. The progressive wing of the party is at war with the moderate Democrat, corporate Democrats like Pelosi, Biden, and Schumer. They're at war with these new Democrats, these AOCs led by Bernie Sanders. So you got a socialist regime in there at war within the Democrat Party over where this country should go. And they've, they've tried everything now, right? They tried to take Trump off the ballot in California if he didn't release his taxes. A judge luckily overturned that nonsense. They're going to try every little trick along the way because they understand that their party is at war right now. And it is a yeah. beautiful thing to yeah. witness. And I'm already planning out the montage I'm putting together of the 2016 reactions next to the 2020 reactions. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, Joe, you um I don't know if you caught that video today by um by Tim Poole. He put one out today talking about the very thing you just said, how the left, the, the Democrats right now are in a com they're they're completely uh, splintering apart because you have the AOCs and the Bernie Sanders crowd, right? The these far left progressives that are saying they literally came out and said just this last week. AOC said that she wants, literally she wants open borders. Everything they've denied about saying that they don't want open borders, she wants to, uh, uh, you know, uh, disband the C uh, CBP, the ICE. She wants to have no, you know, criminality for people. In essence, everything is like she just straight out came and said, we want open borders. And Bernie agreed with her. So you have this far left crowd with the more Joe Biden-ish conservative crowd, right, or, or, or moderate crowd, quote unquote. And they will not vote for one another. They're not going to pull votes one way or the other. They're splintering right now, and it's so much fun to watch. I love it. I just want to pop yeah. popcorn. I think, though, yeah. that my feeling is this. I don't think that Nancy Pelosi and AOC actually disagree on much. I think that Nancy Pelosi wants exactly what AOC wants. She's that radical. The difference is this. Pelosi realizes that Americans aren't going to vote for that crap. So she knows you have to lie to people. You have to say, oh, no, 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 we're not for open borders. Oh, no, no, no. We think you should be allowed to own a vehicle. Of course you can eat meat. But in reality, she wants massive government control of, over all of your life, just like AOC. AOC doesn't have the political shrewdness to understand, hey, you're going to get voted out in a landslide because you can't, you have to lie to the people. And so that's what the Civil War is about to me. It's about Pelosi and Schumer saying, shut up, you morons. Don't let the secret out. Of course we want total control over the government. Of course we want to strip everyone's liberty. Just don't tell the people that. Remember the lesson from Obamacare. What did the architect say? He said, we had to lie to people because we knew what was good for them. And that's exactly <laughs> what the Democratic Party did. We also said they were uh, stupid. Yeah. The bill to know what's in the bill. Right. Well, right. right. Yeah. Slightly disagreed well the architect of Obamacare also here. said that the voters were dumb. Yeah, what I want to politely disagree with 
Robert. I'm going to politely disagree with Robert here. Oh, screw politeness. Who cares? I'm just going to disagree with Robert here because uh, I think Pelosi is a whole different animal. Pelosi is a is is basically bowing down to corporate interests that that fund her millionaire lifestyle. Right? AOC wants big government. Wants government in control of everything. Pelosi wants the status quo. She wants corporates, mm-hmm. corporations, big money corporate donors to control everything in the background. She's beholden to that. I don't think ALC yeah. wants that. I don't think ALC wants to be beholden to big corporate interests. I think she wants the government to be the big daddy of everything. And I think that's where she's going. So I, I think they're two different animals altogether. And I think what you have here is a a Pelosi who's been around for so long. I mean, so long. I mean, she's gotta be 830 years old. <laughs> and here comes young ALC who doesn't even know what a garbage disposal looks like threatening to take away everything and so i don't think they're the same at all that's just my opinion well it's i just real quick i'll be real quick with this i agree with everything you said what what the what i'm saying they're the same as this aoc doesn't like the businesses i believe she's genuine in her criticism but the businesses want the giant government this is what the bernie sanders voters don't understand they say we're distrusting of the corporation therefore we'll have a big government that could go after them but the problem is these corporations want big government these corporations want globalism because that means that their lobbying efforts and their control of that government ensures that they're able to continue to be dominant so i think that ultimately they agree on wanting the huge government it's just for different reasons I, I think that's totally right. My Siri was yelling at me while I was. <laughs> I think that's also though why I mean you you see why like the establishment hates Bernie right now just as the establishment hates Trump. It's because both of them on opposite ends of the spectrum are are upsetting the <laughs> establishment apple cart, and that's where you it, they're really getting exposed. When I look at it, and I'm like, wow, they they are just this deep state establishment, whatever you want to call it is getting exposed because they're trying to sabotage Bernie's campaign because he's not he's not doesn't want to play by the establishment rules and they tr- they've always hated Trump right because he doesn't play by the rules and so I, it, it's kind of a but I think Nancy I think it kind of goes along with what Joe said um, Nancy is part is for the establishment you know that's why she is she has uh, had a hard time with AOC and they haven't exactly gotten along yeah, and I just want to say something real quick, piggybacking off that is, I, it, it surprises me that more people on the left don't come around to realizing how corrupt the media is because that's how that's what we're all seeing. We're seeing them apply the same tactics to uh, that they apply to us to Bernie, and that we all see that we're like, oh, look, they're doing the same thing to Bernie, and so <laughs> yeah. it's like, what? And I've talked to people on Twitter. I'm like, well. Why don't you see that this is what they do to us? And as soon as I point that out, they're like, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's depressing because they're cool with it because ultimately the media is pushing their agenda. But, you know, it, instances like that are proof that they're a total hacks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm opening up the phone lines. Yeah. So if you guys want to call in. <laughs> Um, I got that number written down somewhere. I don't know it by heart. Not yet. <laughs> I want to call in. What's the number? Um, call in. <laughs> there call it is. Call our line. <laughs> Let me call in so I could talk a little. <laughs> Let's put on our pasty. Okay, get a word in edgewise. He's got a call. This is a Patriot Hour. You I got know, uh, American Joe. You got Doug Decody. You got Drone Tech. You got Robert. You got SJG. And, of course, you got Michael. What's going on? Hey, how you doing? I just want to tell you guys real quick. Um, I've been listening to you guys' talks lately, and uh, YouTube's really messing up you guys today. They're messing up? They're censoring up. everything where we're typing in. Are they? I'm not on Joe's a- channel or on yours, so. Okay. Someone's spamming you with some, oh, man. some kind of sex thing going on, so. Some kind Anyways, of- love everybody. Love your channels. God bless y'all. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Thank right, you. We, got, we got another call coming in already, but we'll, we'll uh, take it here in a minute. Yeah, I haven't been paying attention to the chat. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. I'm, yeah, you uh, got some true we have five up with some subscribers in the past 24 hours. Wow. What's that, brother? They stripped me of 500 subscribers in the past 24 hours, and I've still got sure three videos I'm processing and they won't upload. 
Yeah. You sure it's not the beard? Maybe they uh, looked at my channel and came over to my channel because I gained 500. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it's your beard. Mine's not growing fast. Well, hey, American Joe, you saw, <laughs> didn't you, that uh, this live stream wasn't showing up for me and you when we started, right? Oh, yeah. They were like yeah. shadow banning this actual live stream for us on our channel. Yeah. Okay, yeah. my bad. 574 I've been looking. Zero two eight three six two two zero two eight three. There it is, grillings all over it. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I actually might have messed that up. I clicked stream, and in my software here, it was going to go out to three different platforms: uh, Periscope, my backup, mm. and normally I hit one. I was just going to go out one. I didn't want to do three plus have all the call-ins I had. I didn't think it would work well. Uh, my computer'd probably be bogging down. But all right, here we go. We got another call. This is a Patriot Hour late night call. What's going on? <laughs> I am uh, calling from Kentucky, and I am so frustrated with these Republicans. Um, many of them, I, just, I don't trust them, and I'm hopeful that they finally see the light. It is just awful what I am suspecting is going to happen. Um, and I appreciate all of you with everything you've said. And I thank you for your time tonight. I enjoy all of your shows. Thanks very much. I'm Charlie from Kentucky. Thank Bye. you. Thank, thank you, Charlie, you, Charlie from Thanks, Kentucky. Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. All right. You He's guys right. keep There's calling. too many damn rhinos right. and, and actual yeah. Republicans that just aren't doing their jobs. I uh, yeah. Just aren't doing their damn jobs. Matt Gates really irritated me the other day, man. I wanted to choke him. So, no, man, I, even I, the ones you think are the fighters sometimes. I agree. And, and I got to say, I, I defended Bolton for years under Bush against, you know, MSNBC and CNN. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> no, hey. All right, looks like we got a – you're on. What's going on? <laughs> hey, it's Magnolia. How you doing? Doing good. Um, how are you guys doing tonight? We're good. all doing good. Yeah. Well, I wanted to say something to American Joe, actually. I wanted to say that, you know, the reason why you got on here is because – or you started making videos was because how society was starting to change and how, like, up was down and down was up. And I think uh, SJG said the same thing. That, you know, I live in Washington State. I'm moving, like, in a matter of 10 days because I am terrified to send my kids to school because they are putting out mandatory educational programs to re-educate our children and what is acceptable, what's the right kind of person, or you know, how to address people, the boys, the girls, or the not boys and the not girls, and the, the sexuality around that. And it's driving me nuts. And um, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you to everybody who's out here because in doing this, because somebody has to say something. Something has to happen, and you guys are so amazing. And I appreciate and respect you guys a lot. That's pretty much all I wanted to say tonight. Well, I, I hope you, uh, I hope you decide wherever you land up when you move out of there. It's gonna, it's gonna come to a city near you wherever you go. Yeah. And you just have to start getting active in your local community. You have to start showing up at these board meetings, at these school board meetings. You got to make your voice heard, and you may even have to rally others, because believe me. There are lots of families and, and people that think just like you and I out there, and they just feel isolated and alone, and that's the problem. See, we're all out there on our own. If we unite and come together, voices become a lot more powerful. That's what the left does very well. The left gets a few people together with very loud voices, and that's why they're able to make these drastic changes to our society. So wherever you land, I, I wish you luck, and I hope you get involved locally in your school district. Yeah. And, um, and 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 help shape what that curriculum is in that area. You have power yeah. there in your voice. Well, as, as you're saying that, that actually, I was thinking about this earlier today. I mean, I know it would go a lot of door to door because even if you did a petition online, you know, I feel like the, the people's vote should matter. All those people, when you guys yeah. went to Virginia and I watched the videos from when you guys were in Virginia and I was, I was amazed that all of the people and all of the, the love and respect that people had for each other while they were there. And I just, I couldn't imagine, you know, and the um, March for Life that recently happened, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of people. 
And, yeah. you know, that's a, that's a hard-hitting thing to try to get that many people to rally up against something like, you know, their local in their local areas. So, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll start a petition online and then go, um, because my brother is young, maybe I can send him door to door in his neighborhood. So, but yeah, that's, I, that's awesome. And that's, I think that's something that we all should do is get involved in our, I'm, I'm all about the little guy. I think I wrote something on one of yeah. his uh, late night talks. I was like, you know, vote little guy. Always, you know, because I, I respect that. I respect that he was, he will go that he go that route that he will run for office, and I think that's what we need to do. I think we need to step up our game, get a little bit more educated, yeah. you know, and, and I think start listening to the right people like you guys, and start doing our own research. Go ahead, yeah. SCG. And, and I'd like to say one thing, and then because I will get some other people calling, but the other thing Joe nailed it. I that's basically the same exact thing I did on my Saturday stream when I sign off at the very end. It's I, I, it's pretty much an echo of what Joe just said of connecting with people around you, right? But also. I have a daughter that's 13 years old and she's in this, I'm in, I'm in Oregon. So I know exactly what you're going through. And the biggest thing you can do is pull your kid close and tell them and teach them what, what the truth is. Teach them what the truth is in love, but you teach them what the truth is and that this is an insanity, insidious programming that is an agenda and is meant to do this to confuse our children and that you stand against it and you talk to your kids and pull them close and, and, and teach them the truth. Uh, well, I anyway. think you're a brave man that you have a daughter or have sons. And I know it's not like, that much easier, but oh, I mean, over here on the West Coast, especially in the Northwest, like Washington and Oregon, there are programs where, like, you know, let's say your daughter or, you know, got pregnant. The school could decide if whether or not she keeps yep. that baby, whether yep. or not she, you know, whether or not they're even going to tell you. Yep. That, yeah, under that, 17 that, here in Oregon, you don't have to be, there's no parental consent under 17. You can, you, without parental consent, you can get an abortion. Wow. Parents don't ever have to find out. Crazy. Magnolia, we're going to, uh, we're going to let you go. We're going to get to one more call here. We appreciate you calling in. I love when you call in. So call back anytime. I got your number saved actually. So, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks, Magnolia. Right, thank you. Bye. Thanks. All right, we'll get to one more call. Whoever that's going to be, call in now. This is fun. That's awesome, isn't it? I'm liking this. I like the calls. I like I the do. phone calls. We might. We should. We should do these earlier next time. You know? I know. Like, well, yeah, Wednesday morning. And uh, now uh, my show is on Wednesday morning. It's a full one hour call in. Right when I kick off, it's call in. They d guide the show, and then I do one in the evenings on Wednesday nights now too. So I'm going to be cool. doing them twice a day on Wednesdays. But uh, yeah, we can Good do this, format. man. Yeah, and normally it's the call. I see how that beep comes in. You guys are hearing it though, right? It yeah. almost yeah, yeah. Call waiting. almost sucks yeah. right at a keyword. It'll drop, and you're like, "What did they say? Where are they from?" Yeah. Are they? you're on. What's going on? Hey, hey. What's that again? Who is this? This is Renee. Hey, Renee, where are you calling from, and how how is it going? I'm calling from Georgia. I'm just calling to um. Say, you know, just how much you guys are appreciated, the loyalty and the honor behind everything that you guys do. Um, it's just awesome. And I um, also wanted to know what you guys are thinking about or um, maybe mention it in case someone else didn't see uh, with Trump signing the new religion, um, the, the religion um, thingy for to make sure that uh, parents back in school. Oh, prayers back in school, the religious prayer act. Is, prayer is back in school now, yeah. in public schools. That's right. Nice. That's amazing. I didn't even I, catch I, that. I kind of like that idea, but I got a feeling it's going to be twisted into something I'm not going to like very soon, where they're going to have Muslim prayer rooms in every school. And yeah. Or Satanists. Uh, it, it's going it's to go <laughs> places. I really don't mm -hmm. want it to go, so I, I like the thought of it, but I'm kind of... I kind of just want Jesus in school. You know? <laughs> Call me crazy. I, I want the real true God in school. And I well, think it, yeah, I think well, it's going to go opinion, places. But I just think it's awesome. I know um, I worked in pre preschool for years and preschool and then um, uh, school-age children. Um, and we never stopped prayer in school and pre 
uh, preschool or pre-K. And um, so we, we kept it going. And I know that the school teachers were not allowed to, the principals. And it would just become a big deal. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, I think it's great. Not enough other people know about it. Oh, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks for calling in. And we will discuss that a little bit. All right. That was our last call. I'm going to undo this. Sorry for all you other ones out there. We'll I'll, I'll say another thing that just another Trump win. The Supreme Court just allowed the Trump administration to enforce public charge with immigration immigration restrictions. Yeah. So that basically means that they can restrict, <laughs> Yeah, they <laughs> that basically means they could restrict uh, welfare uh, for twelve months, I guess. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll touch base on what she said it is. I'm just reading it now. Trump administration moves to protect prayer in public schools and federally funds for religious organizations. Mm -hmm. Plural, which is what to Joe's point. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, no. But you know, to that, Joe, you know, the, the thing is, we don't, you don't have to defend a lion. So it's like, I, I am like, if they're going to let prayer back in, uh, you know, as we stand here, it's like you, you don't you don't defend the lion. It's like uh, um, God's word won't come back to him void. So I, that's my that's my take on it. I do understand your position on that, but God's word never returns to him void. So, yeah, that's my take. well, it's kind of like the old I'd rather argue with somebody over the difference than not having free speech type thing. You know, sometimes it gets down to that. It's like. We're going to start having religious fights in school. Well, like you said, they've already separated it. But yet I can point out like, I don't know, up in Dearborn, Michigan, not too far from me, they they're serving challah food and stuff. And it's like, I thought separation of church and state and all this stuff already happened, but it just depends on where you're at. And I don't think it's every school is uh, going to jump onto the prayer thing. I think there's some that have probably tried to do it and then been, shut down by the one student probably um that didn't want it because of the rules yep. so i don't know i don't really know. You know well the freedom from religion foundation will come in and file lawsuits all over the country and that's yes. what they do. Sure a bunch of atheists uh, who just file totally lawsuits different. what's that now doug here in the south it's totally different in louisiana uh we have we've always had prayer to school uh at every sports game before we do the pledge of allegiance uh, and we do prayer uh, for graduations, the same thing. Uh, the, here in Louisiana, it's always, I mean, we even have corporal punishment in school. That you, Now, you can sign that you don't want your kid to be paddled if they act up. Yeah. But all Is that the still there, paddling, paddling? To have in school, we still do right here in this Oh, thing. wow. Okay. <laughs> Amen I'm, to that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Now, check it out, you guys. Um uh, on Doug's point right there, uh, I grew up about an hour from where I'm at now, but um, we're talking late 80s, early 90s for for elementary. And every Friday, or maybe every couple Fridays, whenever they got enough bad kids, we'd all be brought into the gymnasium. This is uh, kindergarten through sixth grade, and they would paddle kids in front of all the other kids. It was like a whole gymnasium thing, and everyone was front and center down there. They had this fifth grade math teacher, Mr. Davis. It was pretty stout. Um, and he had this big paddle that he carried around. And uh, they did it right in front of everybody. Uh, you want to make sure you never got in trouble to be down there. And um, can I remember I, that can, being effective. Can I add to that? Can I add to that? So my, my sixth grade teacher was my dad. <laughs> and I went there first and sixth grade. Of, and, <laughs> and my fifth grade was right here. And then sixth grade was right down here, right? And Mr. Trammell was my fifth grade teacher. And I got swatted two times that year from him. And my dad had to witness it. So my dad came out and Mr. Trammell would say, you want the honors? And he's like, nope, go ahead. You can do it. And he would he'd smack my butt. And then that year I was with my dad. I got more swats in that class, I think, than anybody else did. And I, I kind of think my dad did it. Because he didn't, he wanted to make sure everybody he wasn't playing favorites with me. But and it was probably because I was a little bit of a crap head too. Let's be honest here. I, I was a class clown, man, always doing things. But I got paddled several times that year, and uh, better for it. That's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, all right, we are over the hour. Um, it was a great show. I think it went off without a hitch. I'm happy with the software upgrade, so I'm I got it now. So no issues. Um, nice. Any clo closing thoughts at all, Joe? Well, I'd like to encourage everybody who's watching. Uh, thank you all for coming out. Our plan is to do this every Monday. 
every Monday. We may have members move in and out of the panel if they have prior engagements or they have travel plans. So you may see some different faces around the circle here, but it's going to be every Monday and we're going to keep moving it from platform to platform um, so that we get every audience familiar with everybody else's audience. So in order for that to happen, it's important that each of you that's not familiar with these other channels, you go visit their channels and subscribe. You should be subscribing to Drone Tech and Robert and SJG and Doug and me and Mike. And and let's join together, bring our voices together, bring our efforts together in this. That's what it's all about. So each one of us should see our numbers of subscribers going up after these shows because your audience members are coming from different places. And I like what you did. Uh, was that Ryan or Mike the other night when you said, uh, ask the audience where they came from? That was yeah. kind of cool. You know, to look in the chat room, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, where did you come from kind of a thing. Yeah, I did that. Let's do that again if you want right now, you uh, everybody. Um, me, of course, the Patriot Hours one. You got Doug is uh, Joe's three, two. Joe's two. So you see it. Um, below me is uh, four. Robert would be five. I'm going the wrong way. I can't figure out how my camera works. Six. That's six people. I can't so that where you're from, or or what what channel you came from here? And we're doing it. There it is. I know. I'm not, I I beg the community. Four, six, oh, one, two, three. Six, I'm seeing. Six, four. I'm not seeing any sixes here. <laughs> it's all I can well, see. There it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we know what, yeah. SJG, uh, you got to start pulling your way, buddy. Uh, this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. Next I'm time okay. you come, man. Not... Next time you come, can you bring a friend at least? Got... <laughs> Big Muro. Big Muro. One... Oh, that was one, two, six. <laughs> there we go. We got ja ja Johnny Rhodes. Johnny Rhodes. Thank you, Johnny. Johnny Rhodes. That's almost like a rock star or a other kind of star name. Johnny Next Rhodes. time, pay somebody at work to be here, man. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> have my wife. There. I'm my I was gonna say, aren't you like, married, dude? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, I know. She's gonna have to be in there. Just, yeah. She's watching her soaps or something. <laughs> oh, no, Watch your yeah. story. <laughs> All right, um, this is great. Right, so I don't know who, who, who do we know who it is next? Seventeen. David Coleman. He can't do I math. I can tell you. He Give me one 17. second. I can tell you. <laughs> Sorry. You're fine. Give me one I minute got, and I can tell you where we're at next. I was supposed to be, but I got bumped up. So now we'll either get back to. I got, I got a bathroom break. Judging from the call out on how many people came here from my channel, my channel probably shouldn't be next. <laughs> we'll have 120 people come here. Like, We're going to do your uh, channel around week 47. Uh, around week 47. <laughs> um, okay, so next week it was supposed to be Brad Bishop, but he's no longer going to be doing our panels because he's got a prior engagement now. So next week it is Douglas to Cody's channel, right. Douglas to Cody's channel. And then we're going to recycle back around to the beginning after that. So next, next Monday, Douglas to Cody, uh, 10 PM Eastern nine central panel discussion. And if I could say one thing before we leave, I just wanted to give a special shout out to you, Mike, to American Joe and Doug to Cody for going down to Virginia. I am honored, I and I really mean this. I'm not just saying this because I'm on here talking to you. I showed all of my friends and family. It wasn't just that you all went there and defended our rights, but the way you all carried yourself. And I watched your streams all day. I called into Doug's stream. You talked to people that had disagreements. You guys were completely civil. You were int intellectual, explaining how important these rights are. And I was incredibly proud and thought it was a huge victory what you all did there. So just really thank you for going down there. I really mean it. Oh, thanks. Thank you, brother. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, I, I wish I could have met you, Doug, down there. Um, I know that Friday night we got down a little late. I couldn't get the guys I came with to get back into a vehicle for 19 minutes to the the the, the, the place where you guys are meeting up at. But uh, I did get to meet Joe. That was great. But uh, next time, brother, for sure. That's yeah. indeed. Next That's event. Can I just right. thank every thank you guys for including me in this, and uh, I love the idea. And I think it's a great idea, and I think it's working out beautifully. This is, I think, the best show we've had yet. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we're get we're getting better at the uh, not talking over each other and kind of feeding off of each other. It's good. Yeah, I know yeah. I'm bad. I apologize. All right. Well, and I'd like to also, yeah, just say a, a big thank you to all you guys, and especially like Drone Tech and American Joe. You have been. I, I sorry, I didn't mean to cover up the camera there. That's the room doing that. 
Um, but you guys have been such huge supporters and between you two, you guys have brought so many people to my channel and I just am forever grateful and I really appreciate you guys. And uh, Douglas, I'm glad to get to be getting to know you. And Robert, you and I have been come up, we came up together. We're like brothers. I love you too, man. <laughs> and Mike, it's, been, it's been a pleasure uh, oh, yeah. getting to know you too. I'd love Same to come man. on your channel sometime. Um, All right, enough of this sobby crap. You are right now, man. You're on the channel. That's joking. You'll come back. I know what you mean. I'll get you on. You guys get this sticker down there. It's a good one I came across. When guns are outlawed, I will in Virginia, I will be an outlaw. <laughs> Black rifle shirt, and I was gonna wear it yeah. tonight, but I'm you know, I should pick up a bandit shirt that I that I wear. I, I think I'd be a good fit on all you guys. Which one? What'd you say? <laughs> the bandit shirt. I usually wear the bandit shirt. But yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, we'll shut this one down, you guys. Uh, worked out hitch free i'm i'm surprised uh I, now i know the limits but this is uh this is great the software is good it works um we'll see you guys back next monday and it'll be on you said brandon's i no uh doug's doug's, doug's channel so you guys look yeah. forward to that and look at all the links will be down below all right you guys we'll see you back here on the next uh Peace out, guys. next Thank monday you. see you later mm -hmm. There's an awkward part. <laughs>